Hey guys, Sandy again here, your licensed realtor and lender here in the um, Central Florida area. Today I want to do a topic on how to buy your first real estate investment property. Um, I've been doing real estate for quite a while, from 2000. Um, I've got, I've helped so many people buy a home, right? So the first step is buying your first home and that kind of thing. But I've also met these same, same people, I know they're like, okay Sandy, we have a home, we have some equity in our home. How do we buy our first real estate investment property? So I'm a realtor that not only helps you to buy your first home or to buy a home, but I also help you into real estate investing. And the reason why I do this is because this is such a great way to build wealth. I'm also a real estate investor, and I believe real estate is one of the ways that you could use to build wealth. Even if you were to buy one home, lived in it for the rest of your life and didn't do anything at all after that, you would still be building wealth. But how about we took it a step further? How about let's say we have some equity in our home so now we could you know buy something or maybe we inherited some money or win the lotto ha! or maybe you have some rich relatives right to get you started in the down payment of buying an investment property right let's pretend you do have the money to do this you get funds you got down payment assistance your relative is trying to help you 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 know maybe three or four family members came together or three or four friends came together to do this real estate deal let's talk about that so how do you buy your first investment property? So first you gotta determine what do you want? Do you wanna start large or small? If you're in New York, you're probably thinking of buying a multi-family multi home. If you're in the Central Florida area, you're probably thinking about buying a home you could use for Airbnb or short-term renting. Um, and remember guys, Airbnb is short-term renting. I get this question all the time. Think about tissue and Kleenex. The same way Kleenex took over the word tissue, is the way Airbnb took over the word short-term rental. So when I say short-term rental, I'm also talking about Airbnb properties, okay? So, but remember that Airbnb is not only this one and only short-term rental platform. We have Booking.com, we have Verbo, we have Home Away, we have TripAdvisor, we have Expedia, right? All these things. So the hotels are short-term renting, and you can also get a home to do short-term renting in. It's the same thing. And in our area, you have to get a license. You have to actually get a lodging license to turn your home into a short-term rental. And since we're on the topic of short-term renting, remember that certain areas require, it has to be qualified for you to rent in certain area for short-term renting. If there's an HOA involved, you want to make sure the HOA will allow you to do short-term renting. You want to make sure that whatever neighborhood or community or development you're buying in is zoned for short-term. That's major. Because if you went and bought your first real estate investment property and you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to buy this property, I love it, then I'm going to rent it out as a short-term rental property, and you close on the property and you got your first few guests, and then you got a letter in the mail from an attorney that represents the HOA you're in or the neighborhood you're in saying, cease and desist, you cannot do short-term renting here. That's super duper important, guys, okay? Now let's pretend that you're trying to figure out what would be your first investment property. The easiest way to buy for, um, an investment property for the first time is to keep it residential, right? Meaning you're gonna buy four units or less. So you could buy up to four units or less if it's gonna be your first time. It could be a townhome, a condo, you could buy any number of things and make it into your first real estate investment property. Now the loan source I'm gonna tell you to use is gonna be the DSCR loan. And a lot of people have been talking about this and here's why. The DSCR loan, you qualify for a DSCR loan, not by you, but by the property. That means they're not gonna be asking you for your income tax statement and your income and all that great stuff. They're gonna be checking your credit for sure, and you're gonna to need to have a credit score of at least 640, but they're gonna use the property to qualify. In other words, what you're gonna be looking at is how much money are you getting monthly for this property and what is your debt services to this property. The debt service is gonna be your mortgage, your taxes, and your insurance. So they're gonna look at that, they're gonna look at how much income you're making and that's what it's gonna be based on. Your interest rate will also be based on the profitability of the property, meaning how much income you're gonna make versus what is your debt service. That's all there is to it. So let's try to figure out what is gonna be our first investment property. Do we wanna do the short-term rental market? Do we want, in our area, we advise our, lend, our investors to do a property that they could do short-term or long-term. In our area, short-term makes way more money than long-term. So let's say you were to buy a four-bedroom, three-bath home with a pool, for an example, right? Let's pretend that that property, if you were to rent it out monthly, would probably give you $3,000 per month, right? So that same property is giving you $3,000 per month if you rent it out long-term. 
if it's zoned for short term as well and you furnish it and you made it into a short term rental, you could probably double or triple that $3,000 per month based upon the season. Our area is very seasonal. So you're going to make more money during the spring and summer months as opposed to the, say the mid August into mid November. That's going to be a slow period. Another slow period might be January through March, J January through mid March. However, January through mid-March in our area, there's a lot of snowbirds that come down here. So you may not have a slow period here because the snowbird is going to rent your home for like a month, two months while they're here during the winter season. So your slowest part of the year really is going to be mid-August to mid-November. That's going to be the slow period. That's when you're going to have to fluctuate your rates. That's why there's going to be some months that you're going to double um, that $3,000 and there'll be other months that you'll triple that $3,000. But you're going to be making more than $3,000 no matter what the month is doing short term versus long term that's our area now maybe you're going to be like you know what yeah that might be true sandy but i don't want to deal with the short term rental guests i don't want to be people checking in checking out i just want to have one tenant and don't have to deal with it then of course you could go long term but at least if you had a prop that you could do short term or long term in that makes it really great also in our area there are great resort areas that you could do short term rental only right they're zoned only for short term renting like they might have a 30 day minimum or a 90 day minimum, meaning you can't rent to anyone for more than 30 days or for more than 90 days. Those are a little bit more restrictive, but those are the resorts that have the water parks and the miniature golf and the great clubhouse and all the amenities. So you got to figure out, do you want to go in that direction or do you want to go in another different direction, right? Or maybe you might say, you know what, forget all that. I just want a two unit or a three unit or even a four unit building because that's the most you could do and still stay residential. I just want a four family building of some kind or maybe four units together that I could just rent out long term. I want nothing to do with short term. Each person is different. No matter what the scenario is, though, you could still use the DSCR loan to qualify for any of these properties. All you need to do is have a credit score of 640 and you're going to need to have 20 to 25 percent down payment. Let's pretend it's a condo, right? That's the cheapest way to get in there. Let's say it's a condo. The condo is on the market for 200,000. You do have a 25 percent down. You're going to do a DSCR loan to buy this condo. You could do that as long as the rental income suffice the monthly debt services. That's very important. Or the monthly mortgage payment. So if that condo, you could rent it for, say, $2,000 a month, and your mortgage insurance and taxes is like $1,300 or $1,500 per month, and you're going to rent it out long term, and the tenant is going to pay for all the bills, then you're going to be good to go. Now, we do provide Zoom consultations. doesn't matter where you are in the world, listen to me. In the States, that is, in the States. That's all I know is the States. I don't know about England or Canada. But if you're in the States and you're thinking about investing, definitely give us a call, 407-791-4713. We should have information up here somewhere down on the video somewhere that you could give us a call or text us, and we will arrange a Zoom call. We do work 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., seven days a week, so we're going to find time no matter how busy your schedule is. And we could do a one hour Zoom call with you and go over these different scenarios and see what best works for you. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. I don't like to do very long, lengthy videos because then I lose people. But thank you so much for listening. And if you're thinking about doing your first real estate investment property, give us a call. Let's talk. Let's see what scenario works best for you, how to get the funds and how to start getting this done. If you already have a home and you have equity in the loan, that would be a first way to start. You could do an equity line of credit. You don't have to refinance because interest rates now are crazy. However, if you have, a, if you could pull enough money to get another investment property that will pay for the property you pull the money from and also the property you're buying, then you are cooking with gas. Okay. But thank you so much for listening. I'll see you on the next video.